Let's start with this tonight, Abdal. Uh, yesterday, it seemed as if not a great day for the Bears at training camp and especially the offense. Now, the reporters uh, around uh, the Bears beat didn't really specify that the defense was really excelling. It was more of a slow, not great performance by the offense yesterday in camp. And now we're kind of ramping up for the second preseason game on Saturday against the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, and that's kind of the issue here is that the injuries on the offensive line are starting to pile up. You know, you had three of your five offensive linemen not participate in team drills or leave team drills. Tevin Jenkins left with uh, an injury, didn't return. Darnell Wright wasn't at practice. And then you're looking at, you know, Nate Davis, who participated in the offensive line drills, but didn't get any, you know, uh, didn't get any of the other work that was going on. Wasn't in the two minute drill, wasn't anything else. So you've got a banged up offensive line and that comes into play now with these preseason games coming up. Do you put Caleb Williams out there in a meaningless preseason game? Like the score doesn't matter. The result doesn't matter uh, behind a few backups. Like there might be, you know, Bates might be out there at center. You know, Braxton Jones is probably going to be out there. He's fully healthy. So if those guys are out there, is that enough to put Caleb Williams out there for preseason games on Saturday against the Bills? I absolutely think it is because you can't protect them forever. You have to start playing some football. You have to start getting your rookie quarterback ready for the regular season. Now, I get the concern, right? You have missing three of five on your offensive line. That's not great. It is possible, though, that various points throughout the season, you will not have five of five starters on the offensive line. A part of what Ryan Poles was working on this offseason is creating depth along the offensive line, bringing in people like Coleman Shelton, Ryan Bates, mm -hmm. along those two guys to battle for the center position in hopes that one beats out the other, but then the other is sitting, waiting to fill in for one of the other guys in case they go down. You mentioned Jenkins. Nate Davis, Darnell Wright, you're missing all three yesterday. Therefore, in various points during the two-minute drill per Courtney Cronin yesterday, you had Jerome Cavan at left guard, Coleman Shelton played center, and Ryan Bates played right guard. So you used both of the guys that are depth pieces battling for center on the offensive line in a setting where you had three of five of the offensive line missing. Yeah, They have to get used to playing with Caleb Williams. You cannot go into this game on Saturday and protect Caleb Williams by saying, because we don't have a fully healthy offensive line, he will not play. Mm -hmm. You got to play him. And I, I think that's where you can look at polls as well and say, did he do enough along the offensive line this offseason if we're already having concerns with health, injury, and then depth with the offensive line? And we've gone through one preseason game. Yeah. And we're at this point. And well, with Nate Davis, he went through two hard practices with pads. And then we've been dealing with issues for the last week or so. This isn't just a Bears problem, though, right? You're seeing offensive line injuries pop up all around the NFL. And that's part of the reason why you add depth. I think that you can do a few things with Caleb Williams on Saturday against the Bills, right? You can have... Whether you decide it's Ryan Bates or Coleman Shelton that's going to be your center, your starting center. I would like that to be figured out this week, right? And you name a starter. Because if he's going to be out there this Saturday, next Saturday, and then the Thursday night game that they play the final one against the Chiefs, if Caleb Williams is going to be out there, they need to work on that center quarterback exchange as long as possible yep. before you get to that first game against the Titans. So if it's going to be... Ryan Bates or Coleman Shelton, leave them at center, whoever it is. I don't care who it is. Just pick one and leave them at center so they can work on that in an in-game situation. Also, you can call plays to protect Caleb Williams. He can hand the ball off three times, and if you get a first down, cool. Run some screen plays. You don't have to show off your entire offense, and you shouldn't be showing off your entire offense in a preseason game. Throw some screens to DJ Moore or whoever's out there. DJ Moore might, might not play, and that doesn't mean that Caleb Williams can't play. Just you need to get the quarterback, the center quarterback exchange right and get some of this timing down. Get the play call in to Caleb Williams. Make sure he can get the call in to the offense. They can execute the play. If the play is successful, fine. If it's not, I'm not that worried about it because I'm more worried about the mechanics 
of everything that goes into him commanding the huddle in these preseason games. So if all of your centers are healthy, your possible centers, Bates and Shelton are healthy, pick one, and then scheme around your bad offensive line. You can do that. Good offensive coordinators find ways to do that. And if Shane Waldron's a good offensive coordinator, which everyone believes that he is, figure out a way to get Caleb Williams some work while keeping him upright in the huddle and not letting the backup guys affect what you do. And this is why we pointed out heading into the Hall of Fame game that this first team offense needs work. They need to prepare and they need to get ready for the opener and they need to start getting some of these reps in these games. Just go back to yesterday from Courtney Cronin in her report covering practice yesterday. Rough operation for the first team offense in two minutes. After a sack, a fumbled snap, and a run play, Matt Eberflus made the unit do the drill over. Williams hit more on a first down, but the following plays were a sack, a pass breakup by Edwards, and an incomplete pass. Okay, so if this offense was ready to go for Tennessee week one, we wouldn't have to worry about these conversations about getting practice, getting snaps uh, in a preseason game, making sure the offensive line and the quarterback are on the same page. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we're now going on about a week or so where you entered into an opportunity where you could have gotten some run for your first team. You, you elected not to. Yeah. And I don't want to hear from Bears fans who want to call up at 312-332-3776 and, and say, well, other teams don't play their starters in the Hall of Fame game. All right. Well, the Bears want to accomplish something this year. They they want to move forward. They mm -hmm. were a seven-win team last year that was disappointing. They want to actually compete this year. Let's make sure that Tennessee, the opening game, that this team's ready to go because that was the problem last year. They were not ready week one. They no. weren't ready in September. It took till October for the team to start kind of turning things around and start playing a little bit better football. So if the team was looking sharp in practice, if Eberflus wasn't having them rerun the drill, yeah. if you don't have these issues, the fumbled snap, the coach then saying, you got to do it again, all this stuff, then I'd say, okay, yeah, the preseason games don't really matter. You know why? This also offense has it locked and loaded. They're ready to go. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we've now gone about a week where – the problem of the offensive line quarterback and the operation of the offensive side of the football has not been smooth. And that's why I need them to play a quarter, if not more, on Saturday in this second preseason game because I want them to start getting this stuff out of their system. I want them to work. Now, see, I said before the first the Hall of Fame game that I was fine with Caleb not playing. As long as he plays in this game, and the game against the Bengals, and the game against the Chiefs. It's not like they start the season the next week. They got a full week off, and because you play on Thursday, you got 10 days off before the opener against the uh, the Titans. So he's going to get a lot of rest. So you've got a ton of time here before you play that first game. It's more than it's actually more than 10 days. It's like th two and a half weeks you've got off before you play that game against the Titans. So I would say he should play in the next three preseason games and get some run and fit. And like, I don't care if it's a quarter, however much it is. I would say two to three series, right? However long that is. If you come out and go three and out, I don't want that to be the end of it. I don't, and, you know, and let's say the other, you know, you come back out and half of your series is, is in the first quarter. The other half's in the second quarter. Two series might be enough, depending on what the Bears do. If they march down the field and score a touchdown and they only get the ball once in the quarter, then, okay, that might be enough. You know, he's done enough. He's taken a bunch of snaps. They they had a, a full long drive. They scored a touchdown, got a field goal, whatever. That might be enough. If it's not, you keep going. Play a quarter and a half. Then in the in the in their third game, everybody else's second game, play a full half. Then in the last game against the, the Chiefs, maybe you scale it back again and only go back to a quarter and then say, hey, we were successful, call it a day. But right now, if the season were to start, they're not ready. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable right now no. that if the season were to start no. tomorrow, that this offense would be ready to go? No. I mean, I, I I would feel a little bit comfortable just because it's the Titans, and I feel like it's still a winnable game, and the first pre first game is is still winnable. I think because yeah, they got their asses kicked against the Packers, but the year before that, in a monsoon, they beat the 49ers, who were they were expected to get their get the crap kicked out of them by. So. You can it can go both ways that first game of the season. You can catch a team or you can get caught. So 
I'm not fully confident in them being ready because there's we're still a month away from the regular season starting, and I haven't seen Caleb Williams play in any NFL action whatsoever, which is why I would expect, even with a bad off or banged up offensive line, for him to get out there. Because the odds will dictate from what we've seen from Tevin Jenkins, from what we've seen from Nate Davis, they won't stay healthy the entire season. So what, every time one of them gets hurt, you're going to go, you, you're not going to play him. You're going to go to Bajan every time <laughs> one of them gets hurt. Well, the offensive line's hurt, guys. Tyson Bajan. Well, and, and you you mentioned it. I mean, that that's the one thing that you and I like to point out to our listeners is that uh, we'll field the calls on complaints of the offensive line. But for the most part, all 32 teams in the NFL are dealing with offensive line issues. Yeah. Most teams in the NFL have issues throughout the season navigating injuries and bad play on the offensive line. There's very few teams where it's like five starters for the entire season and they're all vets and they're all really good. I think back to Philly like two years ago, mm -hmm. like they were just dominating the league. I, I know San Francisco as of late has been really good for multiple seasons, but for the most part, you'll find a lot of teams that have banged up offensive lines, and then it kind of falls back to the quarterback. Is your quarterback good enough to take advantage or to make up for what you have in lack of offensive line play? If you want to talk to us, you can call us at 312-332-3776. Here's where I'll change my mind. We get to two years from now. Caleb Williams won Offensive Rookie of the Year. He's, you know, got a command of this offense. Top whatever, five quarterback. Whatever, whatever. Top 10 quarterback. Whatever, whatever and you tell me that the offensive line is hurt and he's going to sit out the preseason a game, okay, fine. He's gotten three years of NFL experience underneath his belt. He's he's proven that he's got a grasp of the offense. He's proven that he's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Once you get to that kind of status, then fine. You don't have to play, and people won't be up in arms about it. But until you reach there as a rookie, CJ Stroud's playing this weekend. I mean, I would say that he he might, even after one year, because earned the right to be like, you know what? If the offensive line's banged up, I'm not going out there. But he's playing. So, Caleb Williams could definitely should definitely play. Thomas and Bartlett, you're on ESPN 1000 with Black Doll. What's up, Thomas? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for taking my call. I've been dying to talk about this ever since they um, brought uh, Eberflus back. My big concern with Eberflus last year and this is when I was calling in and calling him Eber Nagy and Nagy Flus was the fact Nagy that he, he's not preparing his team to start the year. We all remember that disastrous Packers start. That team was not ready to play a football game until week four or five. And I don't care if they gave him a haircut and he lost weight and he let him grow a beard and all of a sudden he looks like a head coach. My big concern with him with Eberflus is he's not going to have this team prepared again. And he hasn't proven to us that he can do that. And this team hasn't proven to us that they can be taking pre-games off, preseason games off, practices off, guys sitting, guys taking leaves of absence. My big concern is he's too soft of a head coach. And until he proves to me that he can have a team ready to play game one, he's not going to be able to sustain his job and he should be fired if that team goes out there and loses that first game like they did last year he should be fired on the spot that's right. my opinion guys all right thank you thomas appreciate Eber it flows. that's thank thomas you. and bartlett uh yurko on carmen and yurko last week Said had that, that. same yeah. exact yeah. statement yeah. is that if the bears go out week one and lose to the titans Eberflus should be fired you know how you keep a pros and cons list yeah i'll keep a soft and hard list Eber a what? A soft, a, what and, a soft and hard list. Okay. Okay. Or a soft and hard soft list. And hard I'm list. coming on. All right. Not, thanks, Cap. Not playing yeah. Caleb in the uh, Hall of Fame game. Soft. <laughs> Having yeah. them redo the two minute drill yesterday. Hard. Hard. <laughs> I'm walking around the house <laughs> hanging dogs. That's, okay. that's, that's one in the hard column. It's a hard column. Okay. okay. You, okay. If, All right. If Caleb yeah. plays behind a banged up offensive line, hard. For kicking a guy in the ding ding. If, yeah. he, if he does it, yeah. Soft. Soft. Okay. Yeah. It's coming in the mouth. Okay. All right. So all at right. the end of the preseason, once before we get to the regular season, the whole crew here, Greeny, Shay, <laughs> Sylvie, Cap, everyone's ready. I will have a running list a of soft whether Eberflus is soft or hard. Yeah. I did do the waitress at and, the and golf Peggy. course. Yeah. Yes, of course. And we will determine as a show whether or not it's Eber coming in the mouth. Eberflus is soft or hard. I'm coming on. 
There's a the strange man yeah, out from the studio saying man. that he's hard. He's like, well, that he is, must know something we don't. Not that. 